So let's go for a quick little rip. So we put it in drive, yep. step on the accelerator. And just like any other car, everything else is the same. Oh, you see the cones, right? All that stuff. It's so just, let's go this, this way. My side, or there's whatever. a woman over there. It sees the stop sign. Yeah, and there's a stop we're sign. we're going up to the stop sign here. Now, when you configure a Model 3 Performance, there's a couple of choices. What color do you want the interior? Do you want full self-driving? And full self-driving... You see all the road markings. That's everything right. is visible. It's everything crazy. is visible. So that's the beginning of... And this gets better with every update, the closer we get to full self-driving. So show them the road sound. Yeah. Now show them this. So it's showing the speed limit yeah. and um, all the markings on the road. And it will even show him the light that's green. Yep. So we're coming so, up on an intersection. So it's the intersection. Shows the line. You see the, the light shows you that green. the lights are green. So practically, if this was in autopilot mood, yep. um, you don't have to touch anything. Correct. Well, tell me when you want me to engage that, and I will. Uh, whenever you're ready. Done deal. Our, our friends of the law, making sure Brian is following the rules. <laughs> <laughs> So the cool thing about this is it's very difficult to get a ticket. In it is so, sometimes it's so soothing to see a BMW getting pulled over. Yeah. Oh man, that's he's probably awesome. letting them know that he's out of blinker fluid. <laughs> <laughs> so we're indicating it's pulling up the speed limit signs and it's registering it here. Although I'm certain it's done by GPS and not necessarily just by reading the sign. Another thing I noticed is this system can see up to three cars in front of you. That's right. Sometimes you can't see that far away. I have to admit, I have been in a situation where I'm in bumper to bumper traffic and the car not in front of me, but either one or two more in front of that person has stopped. Yeah. And I'm in autopilot, this car will stop because nice. it's predicting what traffic is doing up ahead. You can see that that yeah. car has changed lanes. We're on a two lane highway. This little indicator here is letting you know how close you are to the sidewalk. I'm trying to come a little bit closer yep, so that yep. it shows. Yep. The closer I get to the sidewalk, the darker it will get. Yep. That's probably right? freaking out. Yeah, exactly. The further I get from the sidewalk, obviously it stops to it stops notifying you. Take a look at the street. You see the pylon? Let's look over here. Pylon. It starts to register pylons. So the other day when he took me out, yep. I saw garbage bins. Like, That's right. Seriously. That's right. It'll register garbage bins. In fact, it'll actually register some Toyotas as garbage bins as well. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh my God. It's actually a running joke. It thinks that the BRZ yeah. is a garbage bin. Oh man. I don't know if that's Elon being really funny, but there's a couple of memes of that. Ah, oh, that is so <laughs> funny. I, I would love to see that today. Yeah, I'm actually really tempted. <laughs> so I push down on the stop twice. It's gone blue. It's telling me that the maximum speed this car will do is 90. We're in an 80 zone and I have it set to do maximum of 10 kilometers over the speed limit. Okay. So right now I haven't touched anything. You are supposed to have your hands on the wheel, but I'm doing this for effect right now. Certain distance away from a car and it's maintaining that. I can decide to either bring the car closer, one car space, or three cars of space between myself and the car ahead of me. And the mm -hmm. car will make sure that there are three cars of room mm -hmm. between the two of us. You've noticed that the lane has gone dark blue. Yeah. It's letting you know autopilot is on and it is keeping you right here in this lane. Now, to make sure that safety is in mind, it wants to make sure that Brian is actually paying attention. So a yeah. combination between the camera here in camera and us approaching this light, you notice that it started to yeah. flash blue. It's saying, are you still there? Are you paying attention? Now let's flash back a couple of months. Um, when we had first bought full self-driving, which was October 2019, this would not rec it, first of all, it wouldn't even see the lights, it wouldn't yeah. see the stop signs, it wouldn't recognize those things. There would have to be a car ahead of you yeah. as you approach that light for it to stop, or else right. it would just barrel right see through. The screen is going so it's flashing blue right now, it's asking for input, so yeah. I'm going to give the steering wheel a slight touch, and it's happy for the next 20 seconds. So those videos that you see of people sleeping while they're driving a Tesla, I don't know it, it, they're obviously faking it, it didn't happen, or they have their hand down here at the bottom. 
because if you do not uh, let the Tesla know that you're still paying attention, yeah. it'll put on all four uh, hazards and it will stop driving an autopilot. Mm -hmm. You won't be permitted for a good amount of time. Oh, it does that. So it's approaching a stoplight, yeah. and this is new for full self-driving. It's not recognizing the difference between red or green lights. Yeah. It just says it's a traffic intersection. Mm -hmm. So the beta version of autopilot, right now, mm -hmm. navigate on autopilot. Yeah. When we had first purchased this vehicle, to be on autopilot meant it's going to hold your lane, and that's it. It eventually became, if I indicate, it will change lanes. Mm -hmm. Eventually it became... If you're on the highway, it will navigate from exit to exit mm -hmm. until you reached the last exit of your trip and then yeah. you had to take over. This is the beginning. You're seeing full self-driving come into play where this is relatively new. It's pushed mm -hmm. down as an update where it started to recognize stop signs, intersections, uh, lights. But on autopilot, it will engage the brakes yeah. for every single light, whether it's green or not. So the way that I make sure, and I'll engage autopilot right now, we're approaching a green light. I'm not touching anything. Mm -hmm. It will say, please keep your hand on the wheel. Yeah. When it recognizes the light, it's going to want to stop. I'm yeah. going to touch the gas pedal to say no need. So oh. that's a safety feature right now where Tesla is making sure that you're still alert because the laws here in Canada say that full self-driving is the various not levels yet. of yes. autonomy. We're yeah. not there yet. So as I approach every single intersection, I'm giving the accelerator a slight little touch, mm -hmm. just like I give the steering wheel a slight, a slight little, little touch. touch. Yeah. There are people who defeat the autopilot system. We're approaching this red light. I'm not touching anything. Uh, unfortunately, it turned green, but you can see that it's beginning to adjust yeah. for what it sees ahead of it. It yeah. sees that that's actually a pickup truck. Yeah. It sees that there's a truck ahead of that, mm -hmm. right? We're doing 49, I haven't done anything extra. It's being extremely cautious because it does not like to pass vehicles on the right. It understands the rules of the road. Later on, I'm gonna hop on the highway so that you can see how much it really dislikes passing cars on, on the right. Really? Technically, it's against the highway traffic. Ooh, that's an interesting one. It. Suzuki? Is yeah. That right? Nice. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's cool. So, we engage autopilot. We're approaching a red light. There's a vehicle up ahead. It's beginning to slow down. I haven't touched anything yet. I'm still not touching anything. So it recognizes not only in shape that that's a pickup truck, yeah. but it also knows that it stopped. Yeah. The truck is accelerating. I still haven't touched anything. It is just following the truck to yeah. be what I said it. So let's say uh, in the, there's an intersection you want to take a left. Yeah. Uh, and you haven't set your destination in the screen. Right. How do you do this? I turn on my indicator and it is switching lanes. Okay. But right now it will not make a left at this turn because that is not permitted by law yet oh right so it will still navigate on highways from exit to exit it will merge in and out of traffic yeah it will ask you if you want to go around slower traffic you mm -hmm. put your indicator on it will go ahead and go around yeah all those things are still um, legal mm -hmm. but the open your door hop into your car actually open up your door call your car from your garage yeah bring it to the front of the house hop into your car and navigate from here all the way to wherever you want to go that is not permitted by law yet. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're going to hop on the highway here. Cool. This autopilot system is just... It's the shit. It's, it's, it, it, is, it is what distance. it is, man. Like, yeah, man. I don't think there's anybody close, even close. Not even remotely. Oh, this traffic cone. I love traffic cones. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, this this is bad. Uh, I mean, slow, 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 very slow. <laughs> so he's on winter tires with a forged rim, winter rim. I, I, I like this exit. It's <laughs> yeah. one of my favorite exits. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, it's protected as long as there's nobody slower in front of you. So horsepower is horsepower, torque is torque. Uh, the answer of, oh, a Tesla will run out of uh, steam and you'll catch it. It's still horsepower to horsepower. If you have mm -hmm. the same amount of horsepower, mm -hmm. there's no way. Uh, yeah. This instant pork is just, it wonders. It's hard to get used to it. It is. And I'm gonna engage autopilot. 
at a certain speed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Ten over. Yeah. That's okay. There you go. So we're puttering around on the highway. The beauty of this as a daily driver is, as I described earlier, going from Erin, Ontario to Oshawa, Ontario in one day to meet two different clients yeah. means a lot of highway work. So I put on my indicator, let her change lanes, and just cruise. The beauty of this is I arrive at my destination refreshed. Um, I don't feel like I've been battling traffic through the GTA. Yeah. And that for me is invaluable. That alone is worth the price of it. Yes. Issue. And um, you being a creator, like yeah. on the creative side, um, you also need to have a clean headspace so that because you, right. you need to know, you need to plan That's exactly what you're going to do. That's exactly it. Puttering along, there isn't anything fancy about what we're doing right now. The reason why I'm touching the steering wheel is yes. to make sure that every 20 seconds knows that I'm there. There are some tools that you can purchase for regular vehicles that will give you this level of autonomy. No. Aftermarket, yeah. I think there's one specific for the Toyota brand. Yeah. Um, there are uh, new camera systems that are coming out that you can affix to your car and plug it into the OBD2 port and it will do lane keep. Because essentially all it's doing is it's trying to keep you between these little lines, yeah. right? Um, I'll call your attention to this little bar here at the top. Okay. That is your power output. So if I step on the accelerator, it goes towards the right. If I take my foot off the accelerator, what Sam is experiencing right now is deceleration, electric car deceleration, until it got back to the chosen cruise control speed. So right now we are doing autopilot yeah. at a set speed. This is my uh, this is my uh, cruise control, yeah. and this is my autopilot. So if I go ahead and I take that off, obviously I'm driving the normal way. Yeah. I pull this down once, that is just simply cruise control. Mm -hmm. But the car will not autopilot and keep in its lane. I still have to do that. You have to do it twice. Exactly. So you can control what level of autonomy you want. Mm -hmm. There are some people who don't trust this. Mm -hmm. Very much like that salesperson told me when I initially hopped in the car, uh, you will get used to it and eventually decide uh, what level of autonomy you're comfortable with. Mm -hmm. Getting used to this torque is tough. Yes, it is. It will take a couple of days. Yep. It is giggles. Oh, see, it's like, a cousin. There you go, cousin. So we have Same no badge. Way. That's probably a single motor rear wheel drive. Okay. Base model. That's, that's probably what I would probably get. Because just because of the weight, I don't think in winter. <laughs> uh, this car doesn't move. No. The fact that I have uh, winter tires in an area where we don't normally get a lot of snow. Yeah. Tell right away, I'm a little bit of a douchebag. <laughs> no, like I braking is there, acceleration is there. Yeah. It feels like it's summer, even though we're on winter tires. Yeah. I always use winter tires, even though I drove uh, yeah. all-wheel drive when I had even had a four by four. I have winter tires because that just helps. Man. Yep. What I find really interesting is uh, when you look at a Model Three base model. It has the wheel covers to it. Mm -hmm. When you remove those wheel covers, those look like work collides, CR collides. No. Yeah. <laughs> really? So you'll see a Model 3 with wheels and you'll be like, oh, okay, those, those aren't bad wheels. Those are the base models. They just have a wheel cover on them. So you take the wheel cover off and it looks like collides. So why don't people take the wheel cover off? Uh, because some people care more about the aerodynamics than they do about the aesthetics. And that's why you look at some... Nerds. Yeah, I'll, I'll be polite and I'll say for some people it's functional. I have uh, been first-hand at uh, being able to tell you that range anxiety is definitely a thing when you get your Tesla. You are telling me because 100%. I think I will have that uh, for some time being yep. until you get you know used to the whole uh, uh, the, the driving style because I do believe you need to adopt yes, uh, have what to adapt. the conventional for traveling sure. and driving style we have been used to. Right. Um, it has to change a little bit. Yes. When I left the house this morning, it told me 410 kilometers yep. right over here. Yep. Right now we're at 366. My cousin purchased a Model Y. Uh, for him, seeing this literally drop as time was going on was panic for him. Mm -hmm. He would stop at 200 kilometers and he'd recharge. And I'm like, you still have two? It, your house is 15 kilometers away from work. Yeah. Like, why are you recharging? I don't know. What What if something happens? It's 200 kilometers. And charge. What's the big deal? Out of all the time that I've had this car, other than my long distance drives to Montreal, 
I have only needed to stop in the city once to recharge because I have a charger on board. The probability of me driving more than 410 kilometers in a day is pretty low. I do. Yeah? yeah. And I never left Toronto. There you go. So you would stop, you would charge, and then yeah. continue on with life, right? So it's like a, like the $20 for half an hour, which gives you four. Yeah. Four yeah. Rates, right? You got it. 20 bucks and you're back up to 410 kilometers yes. in the performance. In the long range, I'm sure that's like 500 and something. It's plenty. Yep. I'm taking you to Guelph Line. Oh, it's one of my favorite roads. There you go. Because, uh, never mind. Yep. <laughs> the people who watch uh, uh, Straight Pipe yep. may recognize some of these roads. Correct. Because they come to these areas. Yep. Okay guys, so one of the things that makes driving an electric car a little bit different when you're an enthusiast is going through canyon roads if you're in California, back roads if you're you know anywhere else is the fun of it is the corners. Well having the battery pack below the, the center axle, below the nuts of the actual wheel, makes it very planted and very grounded, giving you the electric torque, uh, the boost off the line makes coming out of a corner very entertaining. So we are coming up to a corner right now. Uh, the hard thing is getting used to what you feel. And it's, you haven't felt anything like that before. <laughs> There's oh, no sound to dude. tell you how fast we're going. Uh, dude. <laughs> oh man, the grip. The grip is just crazy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. So the beauty of that is I haven't touched my brakes at any point in time and you end up doing one pedal driving on the accelerator, off the accelerator, and the car will decelerate and accelerate all the way through, which gives you a whole new driving experience that you haven't had before. Just mentally, you're not ready. You're not ready because you don't hear this. And there's right there. There's another Model X. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, actually, I think that might be a Y. Which is a Model Three on stilts. It's pretty tall. Get close. Yeah, you're right. It's not as tall. Yeah, as it more runs, but Model Y. Yeah, it is. There you go. Ah oh, man, you okay? <laughs> Man, my hands are sweaty. Yeah. Okay. Giggles. So you have done it before. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um. Do this at night. At, at, at night. 300, yeah. yeah. Even this location is not too far from my house at all. Exactly. So. exactly. Just the western, northwestern Toronto is beautiful. It's the driving roads are fantastic, especially because the, our friends of the law are too busy in the city. That's right. And they overlook these areas. Yeah. And we like it. 100%. Another portion of why I really enjoy having a Tesla Model 3 performance as a daily driver is simply that our GTA is designed like a checkerboard. It's all straight lines with the occasional entertaining twisty turn. I don't know about you, but I get really bored on long straightaways, which is the majority of the city. I can have my fun in the twisties, uh, doing the speed limit, but driving enthusiastically mm -hmm. through the twisties, and then come time to hit the straightaways, re-engage autopilot because that's the dumb part of your commute. Yeah. I'm more interested in the fun parts. And like I said before, I want to have fun when I drive and I don't want to be bored on the boring parts. So I engage my autopilot yeah. and right I just there. carry on with life. So um, this system was not, um, like back in the day, you can only turn on autopilot in the highway, but that's this right. is a new system, right? Yeah, so uh, don't quote me on the exact months, but 2019, early 2019 was when you were allowed to start engaging autopilot on a road, mm -hmm. not the highway. Uh, end of 2019, they started adding more and more features. So the car just barked mm -hmm. because of the height yeah. of the road. It saw another car coming and because of the last minute turn on that road, mm -hmm. 
it saw it as that could be a collision. Why is that car in front of me? Mm -hmm. Right? And as it got closer, it realized everything is a okay. So autopilot is constantly, or I shouldn't even say autopilot, full self driving is constantly improving itself and learning. And as us as owners continue to put autopilot through its paces, Tesla in itself gets to discover new things about what works and what doesn't work. Um, if you're a good Tesla owner, you squeeze both buttons together, mm -hmm. right? And you see that microphone pop up. I would let Tesla know that there is a flaw. Hey, that wasn't a garbage can. That was a mailbox in a rural area. Hey, uh, what that was was a XYZ, whatever the case may be. Yeah. So that Tesla can learn. They go back through your software. They look at what the camera saw mm -hmm. and they code it. Hey, from now on, this is this instead of that. Mm -hmm. And it's really the users and the user community who are helping to make Tesla better. The more Tesla cars are out there, the more user base they have to, to draw information. Uh, this is a pretty gnarly turn. Yeah, I'm not going to mess around here. No, no. <laughs> the consequences are way too great. <laughs> I actually came up this road in the middle of a snowstorm once. Like yep. we were getting 15 or 18 centimeters. Yeah. And then at that time, actually, I was driving my Xterras with width uh, uh, winter tires. Yeah. I only had to put the four wheel on in that turn. Right. But all this time, just very wheel drive. Yeah. This car, like right now, I'm. If you look right over yeah, here, I'm doing nothing but regenerating the battery. This foot is not even on the brake. I'm not on the brake. We're going around this corner. Yeah. Right. I'm actually a little bit on the accelerator now. But the green regenerating the battery. Yeah. And that's dairy. You've got. It. Oh, that's a nice house. It is. One day. That is, I find that very interesting. The Scion XB, I think it is. No, yeah, XA. Something. The B was the boxy SUV. So as we're putting along, I'm kind of driving right now on rural roads. We have deer and whatnot, so I want to make sure that I'm alert. Even though I'm confident that the car will do it, I'm more confident in myself. So I'm going to look down at the screen to show something to Sam here. So I'm going to engage autopilot for an extra layer of mm -hmm. security. Uh, AC system, um, no physical buttons in the car other than map lights, hazard button, the door popper, and the window buttons. Other than that, everything else is here in the display. So to adjust, there's no vents because that would date the car. You just slide the this, vent. This animation is so cool, man. Yeah, <laughs> it is. So that entire slot in yeah. the dash is an AC vent. Uh, everything is done within the actual dash itself. That way you don't have silly vents pointed at you constantly. Mm -hmm. Some like it, some hate it. Uh, windshield wipers, even that off, on, turn it to automatic, all these things uh, are standard. You know how to use them. You don't yeah. really need a sc yeah. the screen to tell you about them, right? Mm -hmm. Let's go here. The watt hours per kilometer. That's telling you, once you get used to energy output yeah it starts to let you know that's your liters per hundred kilometers mm -hmm. your miles per gallon yeah once you get used to reading it in an electric mode you understand if you're being efficient or not mm -hmm. this was us coming down that, that, that steep hill, hill yeah. right yeah this was us driving enthusiastically mm -hmm. periodically if we were to continue driving enthusiastically like that yeah even though it says 342 kilometers we would only do 229 mm -hmm. and this is accurate Mm -hmm. um, if I were to map a drive to my parents' house in Montreal, Quebec, yeah. um, and it tells you where to fill up, mm -hmm. as you're driving along, and uh, maybe I'll do this in a few moments, but as you're driving along, it will tell you that you might be in, you'll arrive at your destination at negative 2%, mm -hmm. which is false. It will let you know if you're going to run out of energy or not. Right now, it's instantaneous use would say if you continue driving like this, you will run out of electric charge. However, the Tesla system is calculating you going uphill and you going downhill. Mm -hmm. So as you're going uphill, you're using more uh, electric use. Yeah. As you're coming downhill, you begin to replenish the batteries. So it has actually factored that into your drive. Okay. So instantaneous versus your projected, the projected is always right. Always, mm -hmm. always right. If you want more out of your projected, Take your foot off the skinny pedal. <laughs> Yearly maintenance, what do you need to do every year? Uh, what do you need to do every year? Exactly what we're doing right now. <laughs>